This is City Focus, the podcast from the League of Oregon Cities, where we explore the issues that matter to cities across Oregon. Welcome to City Focus. In this episode, we'll talk with LOC's newest team member, Christy Worster, about her new role as Operations and Member Engagement Director for the League. Christy, welcome to City Focus. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. So nice to be here today. It's great to have you. It's great to have you on board at the League. It's so wonderful to finally be here. Yeah, it's it's a great place to work. Um, This has been a position that we've been wanting to fill for quite a while. It's a very critical position. Um, But you you obviously had a professional life before this. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about where you come from and who is Christy Worster? Sure, certainly. I've been in local government uh, since 1995 and have been working for various organizations. I started my career working for the city of Dallas in a shared position for public works, community development, and the fire department. Oh, wow. And um, I worked my way up through the organization, went back to college while I was working for the city, and finished my bachelor's degree. And when I was done, uh, my supervisor said, you're not going to stop here, are you? And I said, yes. <laughs> um, and he said, no, I think you'd make a great city manager and, and the city would like to help you get there. And, wow. And uh, That's so, a vote of confidence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the next year, I started my master's program at Portland State and uh, continued working for the city for, I think, another five years after that. And um, then I landed my first city manager job working for the city of Dayton, which is just a small yeah. community here in the Willamette Valley mm-hmm. and had such a great experience there and have been working in local government ever since. Uh, my most recent position being with the city of Silverton as the city manager. You're in Silverton. It, it's a good gig, I'm assuming. What about the League of Oregon Cities when you saw that advertised? What piqued your interest and what made you decide to make the jump? Well, working for the League has always been a dream of mine. And when I saw the position open, I was really ecstatic about it. Um, I did love my position in Silverton. I, I won't, um, you know, tell you that I didn't. Yeah. Um, I absolutely did adore the city and working there. Um, but what is attractive about working for the league is just the opportunity to represent 241 cities yeah. instead of just one. Mm-hmm. And um, making those connections with the managers to the resources that they need and our elected officials and making sure that they have the proper training to uh, make sure that their city is really well run. And you come in at an interesting time. 2020 was, I don't even have any adjectives left to describe 2020. 2021 is starting to look like we're going to need to make up a couple more to go for 2021. So you're, you're a new employee with the league. You've got a, a very important position with the league, but you know, you're know you also a new employee. So what's it been like trying to onboard as a new employee in 2020 and 2021? Well, it certainly is a different world for me because I'm used to going into the office every day and working with our police department and finance department. And then our other staff members were telecommuting mostly. Um, But now I'm the one that's telecommuting, and uh, so certainly it's been a challenge, but I have had such uh, gracious assistance from other staff members and helping me find the resources that I need to be able to do my job effectively. And I think I've hit the ground running and hope to continue to do that throughout the rest of this year. And (laughs) and, uh, But yes, it it has been challenging, and uh, working remotely is uh, not my favorite thing to do. Yeah. If you're if you're any kind of a people person where you like that that one to one engagement where you can Zoom meetings are okay but they're kind of a poor substitute for sitting across the table from somebody or you know running into somebody in the break room and sharing an idea so it is a little bit uh, a little bit more challenging to do that and obviously again being a new employee is a challenge in and of itself but to do it remotely has got to be interesting we, we can be in the office sometimes but it's certainly not like it was for sure yeah so. Now, you are in the position, you're, you're here, um, you've got a sense of what it is. I've looked at your calendar, and I don't know when you find time to breathe or eat right now, because I know you're kind of slammed with everything coming at you. But I'm, I'm gathering you have a sense of some of the things that you want to accomplish and what your goals are as operations and member engagement director. Well, absolutely. The first things that I want to do is just get back to those core areas that we've been missing so much. And um, one area that's really important to me is the small cities network and the outreach there. Um, As you know, I think we have over 70 percent of our cities in Oregon are small cities. And those managers depend on the League of Oregon cities for 
um, networking opportunity, and a variety of research and training. And I hope to get those small cities meetings launched soon. Yeah. Um, I've been meeting with just the managers in small cities, and we'll be going around to the 12 different regions in the state uh, over the next three months to just talk about what kind of resources they need uh, through those small cities meetings. And then we'll be setting up the regular schedule when uh, things open back up and we're yeah. able to meet in person again. Yeah, that's been challenging. I know I kind of stepped in when before all this happened and was helping to kind of keep that going. And th those meetings in person, I've attended a few of them. They're really amazing meetings and they're very engaged and they're very well attended. And so there's obviously a need there. So I think that's good that it, we're going to be reviving that and you're going to be taking that on. What other goals do you have for the, the department? Well, the next thing that we're focusing on is especially just the training that we offer. And we've had the local government management certificate in the mm -hmm. past and we want to reevaluate uh, that program and see whether we can tailor it to have a start and end point or whether we just want to offer some specialized courses moving forward and then of course diversity equity and inclusion is a priority for the league board mm -hmm. and we'll be incorporating that into our training as well uh, also the uh, uh, other responsibility that my department has is the the conferences the annual conferences. oh that that big Giant. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I, what do we know what that's going to look like this year? How are you preliminarily planning for that? Well, for the spring symposium, we're going to partner with the Oregon Mayors Association uh, for a one uh, one day online conference focused on emergency preparedness, response and recovery. Very timely. Yes, definitely. And then for the fall conference right now, we're planning for in person if it's possible. Um, but then I've always been impressed with my staff's ability to to uh, make changes right at the last minute and be successful in pulling off a virtual conference if it becomes necessary. Yeah, yeah. 2020, uh, that, that was a, a new experience for everybody. And yeah, your team is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing in how they, they pulled that off and with nary a hitch, I think. Um, so... That those are those are sort of inside and outside facing things. As the ops and membership director, you know, how do you see yourself in this role interfacing with membership? What does that look like for you? Well, I really want to be the liaison for any me member service need, and my hope is that I become the go-to person, and I, I hopefully already am. Um, I've got a background working with OCCMA and served on the board there, so I already know a lot of the city managers throughout the state and hope to just reinforce those relationships and, and uh, make more positive uh, professional connections in the future, um, now with the elected, electeds as well. So uh, I, I do see that as a really big benefit of my position moving forward and um, maybe making sure that those connections are made um, and that the resources, um, that we can pr bring the resources that are needed to the various cities. We have affiliates. Affiliates fall under you as well? Yes, they do. So let's talk a little bit about um, who your staff is and then what those responsibilities are. We kind of touched on that with the conference and other things, but then the affiliates, the OCCMA, the OMA, the other ones. Let's dig a little bit deeper into that for members who may not be aware that this now is under, under your jurisdiction and who the folks are that are handling each of those programs. Sure. Well, we just currently have one staff member, Kelly Richardson, that's managing the affiliate meetings mm -hmm. and uh, she'll make all of the arrangements to schedule the meetings she'll attend she'll take minutes and then she'll follow up with any board direction for each of those affiliated organizations so it's quite a big job yeah the OCCMA uh, has about I believe eight to ten standing committees so wow. that's really um, a huge lift for one person um, and in addition to that Kelly also staffs the, the LOC board and all of their subcommittee meetings. So she's got a pretty big job, wow. and I'm really thankful to have her on board supporting the department, and uh, I know she's going to continue to do great work for the league moving forward. So you've got also, let's talk about Lisa Trevino. Right, Lisa, Lisa Trevino is our program manager, and she's responsible for um, all of the conferences and the training program, and she'll also be supporting the Small Cities Network. Oh, she will, okay. Yes. And right now we have a vacancy in our department and we're looking uh, towards filling at that in the next few months. Um, hopefully we'll be able to have somebody on board by the next fiscal year, which starts in July. And then of course we could forget Debbie Higgins, who kind of is the, the outward face and people, when we were in the office, the first face that you see. 
Definitely. Debbie is a critical part of our organization. And um, while she's, her primary role is serving as receptionist, she takes on an, a lot of other functions yeah. for us. And right now she's inputting all of the updates to uh, the changes in uh, councils and mayors throughout the state. Um, and, and there's been a lot of changes. Updating our database. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And uh, she also um, manages the program for posting all of the job notices that come in through the league. Oh, right. Okay. We do have that service. Yeah. Yes. And she's also responsible for the annual um, project where we print the the uh, citations for various police departments throughout the state. So, so that's another tickets project. that are written and found on your cars? Yes. That's a, oh, we're responsible for those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, we talked a little bit about uh, the upcoming events and things that are coming up, but I think I think we covered. Are there any other little small, anything else anybody should have on their radar? I know, you know, we've got different roundtables going with a new president coming in. Do you interface much with the board in that respect? Yes, I'll be attending all the president's roundtables in the 12 regions mm -hmm. throughout the state, as well as the small cities network meetings, which will um, be scheduling soon. So be, be sure to look for those invites in your email box if you're a manager or um, person designated in your um, jurisdiction to attend those meetings. And I just look forward to connecting with everyone soon and, and we'll attend as many league events as possible to continue that outreach to our members. Well, I think, you know, the league has gotten pretty good at remote meetings. I think the president's roundtables have been very successful. The weekly conference calls that the league does and so I think we're getting pretty good at this remote thing. And I think with the roundtables being that they're regional, you know, that outreach as far as kind of expanding that to small cities shouldn't be too hard. My hope, and I think probably yours, is that they go in person, though. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. There's so many things that you can glean from your colleagues when you're just meeting in person. You know, those side conversations about, hey, what project are you working on and how is that working out? Um, even if it's not directly... Um, related to something you're working on, believe me, it'll come up in a year or two and then you'll know the go-to resource for uh, any help that you need. Yeah, plus a lot of times they're held in local residence or local uh, either residence or local restaurants in the region. And I know the ones that I've gone to, I think it was Cannon Beach or one of the smaller cities, the best clam chowder I've ever had in my life I had at one of these meetings. It was absolutely delicious. So I miss that. <laughs> well, definitely. There's so many parts of the state that yeah. I haven't even had the opportunity to be, you know, to go to yet. And I really look forward to connecting with my colleagues and, and our members in those communities. Yeah, the, the smaller cities outside sort of the I-5 corridor are, are so critical to make sure that they're heard and listened to and there's advocacy for them. Um, just as a side note, too, when you're out and about doing that, one of the focuses of the podcast coming up, too, is to focus on cities outside of that and what's what's going good in eastern Oregon and southern Oregon and on the coast and kind of broadening the scope out a little bit to to spotlight some of those cities. I think it's really important because there's a lot of good stuff going on out there, a lot of good ideas. Definitely. And, you know, they're facing the same issues that everyone else is facing throughout the state. And I just really have a lot of admiration for those small city managers. Small town city managers yeah. have so much on their plate and they just don't have the staff resources to, um, you know, help support them in, in uh, the work that they're doing. And, and so they, they really do take out a lot of the responsibility on themselves. and. There's just, um, you know, that's where the opportunity lies in us connecting them to the resources that they need. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's so critical. Well, that's, we've actually covered quite a bit. Do, is there anything, you know, as you're new to this that you want to impart, you want members to know kind of a, an outreach or call to action for our members to, to maybe help you do your job better so we can make that collaboration work? Please just feel to reach out if you have any questions whatsoever with regard to any resources we can provide here at the League. My information is available on our website and uh, feel free to call or email anytime. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you and, and finding out what's happening in your community. Well, that's a lot of good information shared. Um, it, it's been a pleasure sitting down and getting to know you a little bit better because, like I said, we've been remote and so we haven't had a chance to have that cup of coffee or you know grab a Subway sandwich or, or anything. So, um, again, my guest today has been the League's new Operations and Member Engagement Director, Christy Worster. Christy, thanks for coming in today. Thank you so much, Denise. It's been a pleasure getting to know you and I look forward to getting to know you better. And I certainly do look forward to my experience here at the League. Thanks for listening to this episode of City Focus. We will be publishing fresh episodes every two weeks, so be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.